afternoon by inviting um, our first plenary speaker, Dr. Pedro Arreas, who is president of Embrapa. And he's going to start our theme for the afternoon, which is science for a food secure future. He will speak to science and technology, lessons from Brazilian agriculture and Embrapa. So thank you very much, Dr. Arreas. Thank you very much. Eu vou falar em português porque in Portuguese, I will speak slowly for the interpreters can make their work. When Isabel was, Isabel was so quick in speaking, it caused them some problems. I have 15 minutes. It's going to be hard to show you all the situation. Then something very quick. There is a historical aspect. What's our agriculture? The bigger impacts and what we expect for the future. First, let's talk about historical aspects, the ones that are Brazilian know very well, who is Jacatatu. We have a demystification of our agriculture that before the 70s we had a very small production and today you have heard all the things we have heard today. In the 70s, everything was concentrated in South and Southeast and we had many problems for buying things. We had queues to buy black beans because the black bean was imported. Everything was important. This is less than 40 years ago. And mainly there was a lack of knowledge. People didn't know about tropical agriculture. And there was a, a void, let's say, concerning research, education, markets, governmental agencies. Then the great challenge of the time law is was how to move from traditional agriculture to agriculture based on science and technology. It's very important to show you, certainly I have, don't have too much time, but it's very clear for you to see the Brazilian map. If you talk about soil, maybe one of the poorest. We have not so much fertility. The soils are poor. You see the blue one is more fertility. You can see that our, we don't have too much fertility in Brazil. It was really a hard work that was uh, news in the economies not too long ago. The agriculture it was a kind of a miracle. And it's very important to say it's not a result of science and technology, but it's a result of a conjunction of the important public policies since then that were also the institutional construction in Brapa, my company, certainly the tropical knowledge, the knowledge about the tropical, and what they call about the gaucho. It was little entrepreneurs that came from Europe. They had been in Europe. They had come from Europe, and then they have to risk to try a new life. There were people that knew how to live in the field. Then this was a very important work, and also to say that Embrapa is part of all the institutions you have seen, and all the issue, what we call the organizations. And we always had, and as a whole, our system, we also are interested in the productive chains. We also have very good bond with these market chains market nets. What's agriculture today? Today, certainly we depend on the numbers, but it's about 22% of our GDP, 37% of the labor, and 38% of the exportations. So the agriculture, besides being uh, a proud for us, it's very important for Brazil because for our development. And there are many things, I'm going to speak very quickly, many advantages we have now. We have no tillage practice. That was something that has begun with the producers, and the research has made it better. But many things we have done for the tropical agriculture. When I was a teen, and you all, 
We only use it to have apple and grapes in Christmas time. But today we export apples. We have tropicalized, as I say, many of our cultures and many of the, pla the, the things we, that were just for a temperate or chikutu. Then we had many advances. We had to talk about the no tillage practice, also uh, Cerrado agriculture. It was really a revolution, a green revolution, biological control, and the anifixation the nitrogen fixation, and also about carbon. We have and many things concerning genetics and par partnership between public and private companies, plants, animals. All the tropicalization of the genetics we had in the spirit, it was really important. And also all the production systems that uh, are very very concerning the temperature time. Our minister, Roberto Rodriguez, today in the morning we spoke very clearly. i just give you some examples of what he said concerning the intensification of the agriculture in Brazil, how much we have gained concerning productivity, and certainly we have now an, a huge production, especially in function of the productivity. Then you see the red dots, it was how much you have grown, but also less than productivity. Then there was an intensification of our agriculture here in Brazil. And with this, we have today a leadership, not only as exporters, as in the first column you can see, first and second places, but also as production. We can have good places in in chicken, in broil, in, in corn, sugar too, and soy. And we can give the foods for all the world, not only to Brazil. The bigger impact we had, we had a big impact, it's very important to say this, where well, we have the increase of the exports, the occupation of the field, our Cerrado, where just avoid what doesn't happen today. We had a, a good internal development with decrease in food prices, an improvement of the HDI, a stabilization of food supply. Today, nothing lacks, never and we don't have to import many things concerning food. We have a reduction of financial vulnerability. And certainly we have improvement of the income, things that were better now for education and jobs. And that's another important result. That's basically what makes the difference. I mean, the price we have, now we had the price of food basket with the food, we have some problems some years ago, but now we have the stability, a special one. And what about the future? I think that the future, I can put it in Brapa, is 40 years old. Now we were born about 73. Now we have to rethink. As we have Rio plus Vinci, we have in Brapa, like 40 plus 40. We have to think on how to face these challenges we have for the future. And certainly, I won't have all these answers now. But it's very clear, as we see at OCDE, is that Brazil, we're going to need more food. And our country can help with 40% of this increasing of the necessary food for the world. Then we really have to to play this game in order to feed the world. We are here in a conference. We have much to do with the environment. Then Isabella has also the minister. We have a total area, how much we have in production, how much we have as a Brazil that has preserved land. Then we have still a big area of expansion, you see in green, that's the potential also we have, other countries also, but not like us, 
we have a narrative of the patient, the degraded patients that give us a new perspective for it to double or triple our production without even putting down a tree. Then we have many examples of technologies for protection, the, the zoning, we have already told about sugarcane, we have also the, our, the, the oil, we also have zoned all the climatic risk for all the cultures in Brazil, including with the possibility of five, to five grows of spread, broadening, was the possibility of migration, migration of these cultures, how is can we do this? We have a big work with the biological pest control. We have all these varieties of how high productivity is normally very resistant to, come to pests. The minimum plantation, we have, we, we really can broaden this plantation, the no till cropping system, and many things that we can expand mainly with the now technologies and genetic engineering, all the bioenergy that, we have, that our minister has also talked about. And also this reclamation of the degraded areas and other kind of degraded areas we have. And finally, what's we going, finding a precision agriculture for the tropics, we have many initiatives in this way. So we have many important things concerning the challenges for agriculture for the future. The first thing that's very important, we have World Bank and other important organs. The first thing is to change the public image of agriculture. After this conference, we could maybe show to the world how important is agriculture. We, we don't care about this. We don't have a good marketing concerning agriculture and concerning the good things we have concerning agriculture. We have to maintain the competitivity in agribusiness. Then I just jump to the importance of a strength in smallholder agriculture. That's a great advantage we have because we can have a big agriculture for exporters, but we live together with the smallholder agriculture, and one helps the other. Maybe it's a little bit contradictory, but it's not. Both things can live together without a problem very smoothly and help each other. We have to go on, intensificate our agriculture production. We have to use those areas, outright areas, and also Brazil and maybe all the BRICS, we have a new model, a new dialogue, north, south, south. We have all the conditions of giving some of our experiences. Maybe they cannot be directly adapted, but they can teach something to the other countries that have the same kind of soil, climate, and problems, and maybe a culture of the same thing. We cannot forget the subsidies, including because of the word, the word crisis. We cannot just think it's not happening, but we have to attack this because it's a problem. Maybe some of the subsidies may be just linked to carbon sequestration, another kind of agriculture. And I do believe that, that the greener agriculture is even <laughs> Why not blue, why not red or yellow? But that's more sustainable agriculture is something that's necessary, mandatory. And with the hope that in this reunion, this Hill plus Pinch, some of the pillars can help us to get to this. We have too much to show about this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Pedro Rice. Thank you.